Hello, my name is Chelsea Ackroyd. Today I'm going to discuss my dissertation project, which investigated the use of virtual reality to reduce anxiety and negative affect and increase positive affect. Five researchers collaborated as a group to collect the data for this study. However, the dissertation project was completed individually. So today I'm going to discuss some background research, including the applications of VR and the use of VR for anxiety and distraction. I'll introduce the study, including the aims and hypotheses. I'll then lead on to methods, including the participants, measures and procedure. I'll briefly discuss the results of the study and explain what the findings mean. Following this, I'll discuss the conclusion of the study, including strengths and limitations, implications and future research. Virtual reality is a head-mounted display producing a virtual, computer-generated environment. It's intended to provide the user with the sense of being fully immersed and present in the virtual world and distracted from the real world. As the quality of the technology is developed, the uses and applications have broadened. The use of virtual reality has benefited many areas, including the treatment of chronic pain, stroke rehabilitation, PTSD treatment, social cognitive training for adults with autism and phobias, among other areas. Anxiety is an emotional response to the anticipation of danger or threat. Responses include nervousness, fear and worry. Anxiety can be an evolutionary survival strategy to protect an individual from harm or threat, which is helpful. However, when the anxiety is disproportionate to the risk or danger or occurs when there is no danger present, anxiety can be unhelpful or detrimental to an individual. This type of anxiety can cause dread, restlessness, sleeping issues, hypervigilance, avoidance, and physical issues such as tension, trembling, and hyperventilation. Anxiety is also a main symptom of many disorders, including panic disorder, PTSD, and social anxiety disorder. Anxiety can impact an individual's quality of life, their social interactions, occupational and educational engagement and well-being. The detrimental impact of anxiety highlights the critical need to enhance treatment. Some existing treatments include talking therapies, self-help, medication and relaxation techniques. Distraction is a cognitive strategy to reduce anxiety. Individuals who are able to distract themselves or are distracted demonstrate significantly less anxiety. However, distraction can be difficult to accomplish due to the rigidity of anxious thought processes and environmental stresses. Relaxation is also helpful for anxiety through addressing the physical stress response, triggering the body's relaxation response. Relaxation techniques also relax the mind through visualizations, decreasing negative thoughts, showing more self-acceptance and gaining control over thoughts and responses. aims to optimise the outcomes of existing effective principles, which is distraction and relaxation. VR may be used to further strengthen the distraction from anxiety through being fully immersed in a safe virtual environment. Previous research has found virtual reality effective in distracting individuals from a certain environment, such as during medical procedures. However, there is limited research investigating the distraction effect for VR for cognitive processes. This VR system uses a safe space virtual environment designed to be a relaxing escape from the real world. It was expected that participants may be distracted from anxious stimuli and demonstrate less anxiety and negative affect and increased positive affect. So our first hypothesis was that exposure to the virtual reality safe space environment will reduce anxiety more than blank screen and no VR conditions. The second hypothesis was that exposure to virtual reality safe space 
will increase positive affect and decrease negative affect more than blank screen and no VR. Our study recruited participants from three different target populations, secondary school students, higher education students and older adults. 27 secondary school students were recruited from Rill High School. Information sheets and consent forms were distributed to students aged 13 to 16 and the students who returned consent forms with both their own and a parent or guardian signature were able to take part in the study. 31 higher education participants were recruited opportunistically through Bangor University's SONA system. Students were presented with a list of studies and selected which study to participate in through the recruitment information provided. Participants were aged between 18 and 30. And 30 older adult participants were recruited opportunistically from Flintshire memory cafes or lived in extra care supported housing. We displayed posters and leaflets at the locations inviting individuals over 60 to participate. Participants ranged from 61 to 94 in age. And we excluded any participants under the age of 12, any participants with epilepsy or those who lacked the mental capacity to consent to what they were participating in. During the study, secondary school consent forms were collected, then all participants across populations were given hard copies of the information sheet to read through. Older adult and higher education participants signed the consent form and researchers verbally reiterated the key points of the study to ensure fully informed consent by all participants. Participants were then asked to complete questionnaire one, which included demographic information, use of virtual reality and medical history. Participants then progressed through a series of stages. During each stage, participants were asked to answer questions from the CALM and PANAS questionnaires. The CALM questionnaire measures anxiety through rating 16 statements such as I am feeling scared, from not at all to extremely. The PANAS questionnaire measures positive and negative affect using a list of 20 feelings such as excited and scared, which are rated from not at all to extremely. So the stages of the study were Calm thought, which involved asking participants to think of something that made them feel calm. They were asked to hold this thought for one minute, then answer calm and panas questionnaires. The next stage, anxious thought, involved asking participants to think of something anxious, hold the thought for one minute and answer both questionnaires. The third stage, VR exposure, involved random allocation to one of three conditions in the order in which they participated. So the first participant in the VR safe space condition, the second in the blank screen and the third in no VR and so on for all 30 participants. The conditions in the stage were participants in the VR safe space condition were asked to wear the virtual reality headset. They were exposed to a nighttime campfire simulated environment as shown in the image above. Participants in the VR blank screen condition were asked to wear the virtual reality headset but were not exposed to the stimuli, so were only able to see a blank screen. The purpose of this was to test whether any reduced anxiety may have been a result of simply limiting environmental stresses and stimuli, so just having that moment to calm down almost as if they had their eyes closed. Participants in the no VR condition were asked to sit in silence with no instruction on what to think about. So regardless of which condition they were in, all participants were asked to sit for one minute, either in the headset or not, then asked to answer the questionnaires again. And the last stage, post VR, asked all participants to think of something that made them feel calm again, hold the thought for one minute and then answer the two questionnaires. Participants were then given a debrief form and thanked for their time. So the purpose of this study was to bring everyone to the same baseline level, induce anxiety, use virtual reality to reduce this anxiety or improve positive affect, then calm all participants before leaving. It was expected that participants in the safe space condition may see greater reductions in anxiety and increase in positive affect than the no VR condition. On to the results of our study, which were analysed using an ANOVA. Results found that there was a significant main effect of time. This means that during the anxious thought condition, anxiety increased for all populations equally. During the VR exposure condition, anxiety then decreased equally for all populations and conditions. Finally, anxiety continued to decrease after the VR stage for all participants, irrelevant of which condition they were in. 
However, there was no significant main effect found for condition and no significant interaction between time and condition. This means that there were no differences in the amount that anxiety increased or decreased between the no VR, blank screen or safe space conditions. And these findings were consistent across all populations, concluding that safe space environments was no more effective in reducing anxiety than just sitting in a silent room. This is highlighted in the bar chart above. There is one bar chart for each population, secondary school results, higher education results and older adult results. The bar charts show the mean scores across calm, anxious, VR and post VR stages. Each line represents different conditions, safe space, blank screen, no VR. So we may expect the blue line, safe space, to show larger decreases in the VR stage than the gray line, no VR. However, there is lots of overlap between all participants. The use of VR safe space did not reduce anxiety and negative affect and increase positive affect more than no VR. These findings oppose both hypotheses that VR safe space would reduce anxiety and negative affect and increase positive affect more than blank screen and no VR. These findings are very interesting, and despite evidence to suggest that VR has widespread benefits across many different areas, this study found no effect. We are now faced with one of two possibilities. So one is the study was not effective in finding the outcome, and two, there was no outcome to find. As anxiety did increase during the anxious thought stage, this suggests that the study was effective in generating anxiety for participants. However, it is possible that the anxiety was only produced during that particular stage and did not last long enough for the VR stage to have an effect. It may be that once the anxiety stage was over, the anxiety just stopped. Another possibility is that the anxiety was not induced to a level that needed VR assistance. As we asked participants to think of a mildly inducing thought due to the potential of harm, it's likely that participants could calm themselves down quite easily whereas a different result may have been found with genuinely anxious experiences. These issues couldn't have been predicted during the planning stage of the study. There was no break between conditions, so it was expected that the anxiety would still be present during the VR stage. Furthermore, it wasn't possible to work with individuals experiencing genuine issues with anxiety due to many reasons, including ethical approval, access to populations, potential harm and timing the study during the onset of anxiety. Through ensuring that anxiety was still present during the VR condition, a significant difference in anxiety reduction and increase in positive affect may have been found. Other studies which have found an effect have included exposure to feared stimuli, so the presence and reduction of anxiety could be measured whilst that stimuli is present. Alternatively, there may have not been an effect to find. It may be that VR is not effective in facilitating distraction from anxious thoughts. So we would need to address the issues previously mentioned to know more. As for the strengths of the study, it was effective in inducing anxiety across populations and conditions. This study included participants from a wide age range, from 13 to 94. This ensured that findings were not specific to a particular age group. And despite the study including more females than males, the sample appears to be representative of school students, higher education students and older adults. Finally, the sample size of 88 participants was large enough to determine relationship between scores. Researchers in the study received researcher training including how to protect vulnerable participants, the process of informed consent, withdrawal and debriefing and managing risks. Furthermore, researchers followed instruction including the processes to follow and precisely what to say to maintain consistency for participants. One limitation is the use of questionnaires, which can be cognitively demanding and may cause boredom. Although researchers attempted to avoid this through keeping participants engaged and thank thanking them for their engagement. However, there's no reason to suggest that participants were bored, as all of the participants responded in a way that you would expect. So anxiety increased during the anxious thought and decreased during the intervention or VR condition. It's just that there was no difference between participants in different conditions. The final limitation is the reliance on introspection to self-report feelings. It may have impacted data as people struggle to answer how they're feeling in the moment. 
However, again, we did find the pattern of results expected, so this may have not been an issue. Results of the study are inconclusive. More research is required to investigate the impact of VR on anxiety and affect. Findings may benefit a broad range of people struggling with anxiety rather than specific disorders, which has been more widely investigated. Future studies may attempt to maintain this anxiety through a tangible feared object such as a spider. It could be used during the VR condition to ensure that anxiety is present during the safe space intervention. Alternatively, future studies could work with participants experiencing anxiety within that moment. Thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed and please leave the questions in the comments section below.